Welcome, you all. This is your Chief Investment Officer, Greg Silverman, CIOs and Bowties. And um, we're bringing you a new feature, um, not least of which because we are incredibly interested um, and uh, productive on the uh, commodity uranium <clears throat> as an investment. So this is going to be a subsection of the Come Learn With Me series, uh, where we're just going to focus on uranium. Uh, we'll speak about it few charts, stock charts, talk about the uh, psychology around the uranium market. really want to start introducing how we look at investing in a thematic, in a niche such as uranium. We have a uranium group, which I hope you are all members of on LinkedIn. We'll put the link uh, below this. So please join. And uh, we're just going to learn a lot about the fundamentals of uranium, not least of which, of course, is nuclear power. And there's a lot of cool stuff going on in nuclear. So without further ado, come, come join me, come learn with me. This is our series on nuclear and uranium investing. And I hope we learn something and I hope that we ultimately can profit thereby. So thanks for joining and let's get stuck in. This article is China's HTR PM reactor achieves first criticality. Okay. <clears throat> The first of two high temperature gas cooled reactors of the demonstration HTR PM plant at Shidoan in China's Shandong province attained a sustained chain reaction for the first time yesterday. The reactor is scheduled to be connected to the electricity grid before the end of this year. Okay, so that's exciting, right? That's the starting of a nuclear power plant. The number one reactor achieved first criticality at 9.35 a.m. on 12 September, China Huneng announced. It noted this milestone was reached 23 days after the start of fuel loading, fuel being ura uh, enriched uranium, I think, or uranium at least. The company said the demonstration project will now conduct zero power physical tests to verify the core and control rod performance and the availability of nuclear instrument monitoring system equipment. China Huaneng added it will continue to standardize the follow-up commissioning and trial operation of the demonstration project to ensure the first grid-connected power generation in 2021. Okay, so in terms here we need to get comfortable with control of rod performance. Construction of the demonstration HCRPM plant, which features two small reactors that will drive a single 210 megawatt turbine, began in December 2012. China Huaneng is the lead organization in the consor consortium to build the demonstration unit with a 47.5% stake. Together with China National Nuclear Corporation subsidiary, China Nuclear Energy Corporation, SINEC, and Tsinghao University's Institute of Nuclear and Energy Technology, 20% which is the research and development leader. Chen Energy, a joint venture of Tsinghao and Sinek, is the main contractor for the nuclear island. All right, get to know some of the players in the space, very important. And of course, 210 megawatt turbine. Wow. Okay, China Huaneng noted the localization rate of HERPM equipment reached level 93.4%, it noted as the world's first pebble bed modular high temperature gas cooled reactor. Demonstration project used more than 2,000 sets of equipment for the first time and more than 600 sets of innovative equipment, including the world's first high temperature gas cooled reactor spiral coil, once through steam generator. Once. It also <clears throat> features the first high-powered, high-temperature thermal electromagnetic bearing structure for the main helium fan, as well as the world's largest and heaviest reactor pressure vessel. Okay, these are these are not your not your old nuclear reactors, new nuclear plants. Cold functional test with aim to verify the reactor's primary loop system and equipment, as well as the strength and tightness of its auxiliary pipelines under pressure higher than the design pressure, were completed at HCRPM's two reactors on October 19 and November 3rd last year, respectively. Hot functional tests, which simulate temperatures and pressures, which the reactor system will be subjected to during normal operation, started in January. 
China's nuclear regulator, the National Nuclear Safety Administration, issued an operating license for the HDRPM on August 20. The loading of the first spherical fuel elements in the first reactor started the following day. The HDRPM has the advantage of inherent safety, a high equipment localization rate, modular design, and adaption to small and medium-sized power grids. It also has a broad range of potential commercial applications, including power generation, co-generation heat, and high temperature process heat applications. I mean, this looks like the next, next wave of techno nu nuclear technology. A further 18 such HDRPM units are proposed for the Shida one site. Beyond HDRPM, China proposes a scaled up version of HDRPM 600, which sees one large turbine rated at 650 megawatt, driven by some six HDRPM reactor units. Wow. Man, these feasibility studies on HDRPM 600 deployment are underway from set for Sanmen, Zhengning province. Rujing, Jiangxi province, Ziapu, Wanan in Fujian province, and Bayan, Guangdong province. Okay, well, here you have it. So uh, I think we've got to study this carefully. This is new technology and the pebble bed modular gas cooled reactor. That is, that is something new, and we need to dive into that for more research. So stick with us, and we're going to, by the end of this, you're going to know all there is to know about nuclear. Uh, jet power generation. This is your CIO, Greg Silverman. Up for now. Bye bye.